Is it possible to make $1,000 of profit each month selling new and used clothing online from your home? I'm here to tell you not only is it possible, but to share five tips with you on how you can accomplish just that. Stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller, which means that I find things that could use new homes and I sell them from the comfort of my home using reselling platforms like eBay, Poshmark, Mercari. There are so many. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can make an additional thousand dollars of income by doing what I do, which is reselling. Not only am I a part-time reseller, but I'm also a mom of two kids. I'm married. I have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher. So this is something that I really try to fit into the small pockets of free time that I have and I truly believe that this is something that anyone can do. So in this video I'm going to be sharing with you five tips on how you can make an additional thousand dollars every month from reselling just like I do. I actually have been averaging around two thousand dollars a month but you know this is something that I have been doing now for a few years but even when I did first start it didn't take that long for me to get to the point where I was making an average of at least a thousand dollars a month. So I'm so excited about this video because I am doing it in partnership with my friend Rosa. I am going to link her channel right here, but she's going to have five more tips for you. So if you're like, okay, I'm pumped about these five tips that Becky shared, but I want just an, even a little bit more information on how I can make this happen for myself. Make sure that you go over to her channel and check out five more tips that she has for you regarding how you can make at least a thousand dollars a month reselling. So if you're excited to get into this, hit that like button. And if you enjoy reselling content, especially from the perspective of a part-time reseller, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. So let's start with tip number one, and that tip is keep your cost of goods low. So ideally, imagine how great it would be if you could get free inventory to sell online guess what? You probably have access to a ton of free inventory. I'm talking, of course, about your own house, about your own closet. I know, for example, we try to go through our own closets every once in a while. My kids are always growing, so we're always changing out the clothes that they wear because they're always moving up sizes. And as we clean out our closets, I will just take those items and anything that is, you know, valuable enough to list online and in good enough condition, I'll just go ahead and list myself. Even if you're only making $5 here, $10 here, it's still free profit. You already have it at home. You don't have to go out to source it. So since it's there already, why not just go ahead and list that stuff and try to make some money off of it, right? Especially with kids clothes, one tip that I would have is to lot things together. So if your child is moving, for example, from a size five to a size six, instead of listing every pair of pants, let's say, you know, individually, which might take a long time and maybe, you know, each pair of pants is only worth five or six dollars, try lotting together five or 10 pairs of pants and you can perhaps put a price tag of like $50 on those and someone would be willing to buy them. You don't have to package each pair of pants separately, but you get to just throw all of them in a box and them on their merry way. And you have some money in your pocket that you didn't have before, which is really exciting. Another way to get some free inventory is just to be vocal about what it is that you're doing. I have scored so much amazing inventory because I'm pretty open and honest with people about the fact that this is something that I do part time. So I have a lot of friends who just, you know, don't wear certain things anymore and they will bring me that stuff and I'm able to sell it and make really great profit online. And again, because I don't have any money into those items, I get to pocket every single penny that I make on those sales because I don't have to pay for those items. So definitely share with others, maybe through like Facebook or Instagram, what it is that you're doing because you never know who might send some amazing stuff your way. The next thing that I would do in terms of keeping your cost of goods low is to source at places where you're able to find cheap inventory. Some places that I was able to think of off the top of my head are places like the bins, which are the Goodwill outlets. There are many Goodwill outlets scattered around the country and essentially they throw inventory, sometimes from Goodwill stores themselves, sometimes actual donations that people gave them. They'll throw all of those items into these large bins and people just go digging through the bins trying to find things that they want to take home with them. You typically pay by the pound at these places and so depending on which city you're in, you know, the prices can vary from like 99 cents to $3 a pound, but it's a really great way to score some amazing inventory for very cheap. And so that's one place you could go. You could go shopping at garage sales. You could go to fill a bag sales at various charity shops or thrift stores or consignment stores. I know for me personally, my local consignment stores and buy, sell, trade 
trade stores. They have clearance sales every once in a while where things are marked all the way down to like 90%. And so a lot of individual pieces are marked at less than a dollar. And so if you can scout out some of those locations where you can source inventory for cheap, that would be a really great way to keep your cost of goods low. And obviously the reason why you want to keep your cost of goods as low as possible is because when you don't have to pay as much for something up front, the more profit you're going to make on each sale, which helps you get closer to your thousand dollar goal. There are a lot of resellers out there who will pay up for things, which means that they're willing to pay a premium price for items because they're confident that they're going to be able to flip that item and still make, you know, enough profit, enough that's worth it to them. And I would say, especially if you're brand new to reselling and if you're not really sure of what kinds of things sell really well online, I don't know that this is the best way to go yet just because I've also heard of people get burned by spending too much on inventory and not really making enough once they sell it to cover the cost of how much they paid originally or, you know, not being able to sell those items at all. So for me, especially if you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend starting with a lower cost of goods. Now, this doesn't mean that you should pick up trash that nobody wants just because something is cheap does not mean that it's worth taking home and trying to sell online. But what I am saying is that if you go to the right place, if you search hard enough, you can find the kinds of pieces that people are willing to pay good money for online, but you're able to buy it for cheap. For example, I went to a garage sale in my neighborhood. I think this was like two summers ago and I got a Jill Sander jacket for, I want to say a dollar. I'm not even joking you. I think it was a dollar. There was a small flaw on the zipper, but it still sold for $60. And so there are a lot of deals like that to be found. You just have to know what you're looking for and you just have to go to the right places. So I would definitely start researching where in your town you could go to find some really great but cheap inventory. The next tip that I'm going to share with you is to source what people need. I would say this is especially relevant because of the times that we're in right now. I think there are a lot of people in our country right now who are hurting financially and are just not in the position to make irresponsible purchases. But instead, people are turning to websites like eBay and Poshmark and Mercari to find things that they need, but that they perhaps cannot afford to pay retail for. And so if you think carefully about what are necessities that people need in their life, and if you're able to find those kinds of items, and sell them online for a fraction of the price that people would have to pay for them retail, those are the kinds of items that you will be able to move quickly. So for example, I typically sell primarily clothing, but even within clothing, there are definitely pieces that are wants, like things that would be nice to have, and then there are things that are needs. When I think about things that are needs, I think about the kinds of things that people have to wear to work. I think about you know people who are going into the office, or even people who are maybe doing more work outside, like construction workers, like they need specific kinds of shoes, they need specific kinds of pants. I think of nurses and doctors who need scrubs and special kinds of like shoes because they're on their feet so long every day. There are a lot of things that people need and those are the kinds of things that I have personally been spending more time looking for these days than the fun things that people would like to have, you know, like super high-end designer brands or um, just like the really trendy pieces. There are still people purchasing those kinds of items, obviously, but I do think that the kinds of pieces that people actually need in their life are moving faster than the things that, you know, people may just want. So to kind of go along with that, another thing you want to think about is seasonality. You can list anything at any time of the year and it could sell. But for example, right now, as we're heading into spring and summer, if you have things at home that are more appropriate for those seasons, I would definitely say make listing those pieces a priority priority over, you know, your snow boots, over your snow pants, over your heavy winter coats, just because those aren't the kinds of things that people are looking for right now. If all you have to list right now are some of those more wintry pieces, I would say definitely go ahead and list them. But if you can think seasonally, then you're able to hopefully move some of those pieces a little bit faster because they are the kinds of pieces that people are actively looking for. On the same note, you know, I think about like July and August as parents get ready to send their kids back to school, not only are are they looking for clothes for their kids, obviously, but they're looking for things like backpacks. They're looking for things like textbooks for college students, for calculators. And those are all things that can and will sell all year long. But in July and August, people are especially looking for those kinds of pieces. And so if you can think seasonally, then perhaps you're able to move things faster so you're not storing all this stuff at home. And again, that gets you closer to your $1,000 goal for that month. 
Finally, another category that I think people are always searching for because they need these items are things for the home. Things like pots and pans or workout equipment or even, you know, like video game consoles. You know, they're so expensive retail, but if you have any at home and people are able to score a video game console for a fraction of the price, that's the kind of stuff that people are going to pay for. So think about the kind of stuff that you recently had to go out and purchase. Even if it's something as simple as like, what, what are those called? Like um, filters for your car, <laughs> for your home. Like I know my husband is always stocking up on things like filters. Um, I know we always have to buy really boring things like tools. And these are all the kinds of things that people need. They're not the most exciting thing to buy, but if people can buy it for a fraction of the price online, they're definitely going to. So if you can find that kind of stuff, if you have that kind of stuff collecting dust at home, go ahead and list it. The next tip that I'll share with you is to diversify the platforms that you sell on. I wouldn't do this too quickly. I know for myself, when I first started reselling, I started on Poshmark before I ventured out to other platforms like Mercari and eBay. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't overwhelming myself by trying to learn, you know, two or three platforms at once. But if you've been on a platform for a while and you're only selling on that one platform, I would say the moment when my personal reselling business experienced probably the biggest amount of growth was when I added eBay and Mercari to the mix. I was so scared of eBay for the longest time, but I finally bit the bullet and I said, there are so many more people on eBay than just Poshmark, so I need to just get on eBay and get my items in front of more eyes. And the moment I did, I was able to almost double my sales. If you've been reselling, you're probably familiar with a lot of, you know, the reselling platforms that are out there, reselling platforms like Poshmark and eBay, Kitizen, Mercari, TradeZ, curtsy depop there's literally a billion and i feel like there's always more coming out but the reason for me why i wanted to diversify the platforms that i sell on is because i wanted to get as many eyes on my items as possible and also i knew that there were certain things that just sold better on different platforms so for example i sell on poshmark ebay mercari kitizen i do send things into thread up I missed my finger there. I do have my own Shopify store. I very recently started on Facebook Marketplace. I have not made a sale yet there, but I'm on all of these different platforms because like I said, different things sell better on different platforms. So for example, I do find that typically speaking, trendier, more popular brands for like college students and those in like their 20s and 30s, those pieces tend to sell really well on Poshmark because Poshmark is intended for that age group. I do feel like more mature brands, brands like Chico's and Talbot's and Lane Bryant and any home good type stuff, that stuff tends to sell better on eBay. A lot of vintage or streetwear type stuff does really well over on Depop. On Mercari, I do really well with brands like Pink by Victoria's Secrets and American Eagle and Torrid. Now that doesn't mean that those kinds of brands only sell on those platforms. I have definitely sold Chico's on Poshmark. I have definitely sold vintage streetwear type pieces on Mercari. I've sold, you know, Barbies on Poshmark and so on and so forth. But when you put your items on different platforms, it just increases its possibility that it might sell because again, more people are seeing it. And not only that, but depending on the platform, you know, you might get away with pricing something up a little bit because more people on that platform are looking for that kind of item, which helps you make more money on that one piece. Obviously, cross-listing from one platform to another does take some time, and so I personally do recommend using some kind of cross-listing software. I myself use List Perfectly. I have been using them for like, I want to say over two years. I love this software dearly, and it's really the only reason why I am on so many different platforms. If you want to check out List Perfectly, I do have a coupon code down in the description below, and it helps you save 30% off of your first month, so definitely check that out. If if cross-listing and diversifying the platforms that you sell on is something that you wanted to do. My next tip also has to do with listing and that is list consistently. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to list every day, but what it means is that you're listing consistently. You're showing active engagement on the different reselling platforms that you sell on. And the reason for this is the more active you are on a platform, the more you kind of trigger the algorithm and let them know that you're serious about making sales. So for me, I do like to try and set daily, weekly, and monthly goals. You know, I have kind of this big lofty number in my head of how many listings I want to get up in a month. And then I break that down by week and then I break that down by day. I don't always meet it, but at least by setting these goals, sometimes very lofty goals, it helps me pump these listings out even when I don't feel like it. 
And I personally use an app called Seller Insight, especially for Poshmark, because I list everything over to Poshmark first before I cross list using List Perfectly. I will use Seller Insight to see how many listings I have listed for the day, for the week, and for the month. And that's, again, something that keeps me really motivated because I'm able to see this chart of how I've been doing. And my goal is to try to beat what I did the day before. So like I said, it doesn't have to be the same number of listings per day, and it doesn't even have to be daily. But what you want to do is try to sprinkle your listings throughout the week as much as possible possible rather than, you know, listing a hundred things in one day and then not doing anything for the rest of the week or not doing anything for the rest of the month. Yes, getting a hundred listings up in one day is pretty impressive, but the algorithm for all these different reselling platforms, they don't really care about that. You know, just because you listed a hundred in one day doesn't excuse you for the rest of the month. These different reselling platforms want to see consistency from their sellers regarding how much they're listing. So like I said, if you have a hundred things to list, I think it works better for you in the algorithm them if you list those things throughout the month versus kind of dumping them all on one or two days throughout the month. Now, if you don't have anything new to list, you might be listening to my advice and freaking out because you're like, well, I don't, I don't have anything to list and so I don't want to upset the algorithm. What I would say in that case is relist your oldest listings. You know, whatever platform you're on, figure out which listings you have had on there the longest and relist those. If they're that old, you know, there's probably a reason why the item hasn't sold yet. Perhaps you could look at the listing title and make sure that you have a lot of great keywords that people are actually searching for. Maybe you have the item priced too high. Maybe your photographs could use some improvement. So try to look at your listing, see what ways you can improve it, and then go ahead and relist it. And as it appears on your different reselling platforms as a fresh listing, it will get a lot of eyes on it right at the beginning especially if you've made some improvements to it and hopefully that'll lead to a quick sale. Again, on Poshmark, I like to use the App Seller Insight because it helps me quickly identify which items need to be relisted and they have this really cool workflow that helps me get through my relistings on my oldest listings really fast and I'll have a video showing how I do that here. But that is one tool that I, at this point, I don't think I could live without. And then on eBay, what I do is I will end all listings that are going to end that day anyway and relist themselves. And so what I'll do is I will end the listing manually and then I will select the option to sell similar, which means I'm going to basically create a new listing using my old listing that I just ended. And what that does is it makes eBay believe in their eyes that I've created created a brand new listing. I'm not just relisting an item. I'm not just taking, you know, an old listing and having it go again for another month, but I'm creating a brand new listing in their eyes. And therefore they're going to heavily push that item out because it is brand new and hopefully I'll get a ton of eyes on it and make that sale. So if you don't have new items to list, then relist old ones, but do a mixture of those two consistently. Finally, my last tip is this work quickly, not perfectly. The more you have listed, the more you can sell. It's just it's just math, right? Like the more things you have available for sale, the more of those items you can sell and make more money on. I hear accounts from a lot of people who are paralyzed with the desire to be perfect or with the need to have the perfect listing or the perfect pictures. And what happens is because they just feel like their listings are not good enough, they don't even put their listings up and so the item never sells or because they feel like their pictures just aren't good enough or they don't feel like they have the right items to sell. They just don't list their items and as a result, they can't sell those things because they're not listed. Get into a rhythm, try to work without any distractions and just get as much as you can done because again, the more you have listed, the more you can sell. Don't lose time over trying to write the perfect caption or I know a lot of people waste a ton of time trying to find stock photos or trying to find the style name for something. Again, Again, the chances of someone buying it when it's listed are 100% higher than the chance of someone buying it if it's just sitting in your house waiting to get put up on the internet. Just go ahead and get it listed. If you want to waste time later looking for the stock photo or looking for the name of what that you know dress is called, you can do that later, but just get it listed first. Get some eyes on that baby and hopefully it'll sell before you even find the stock photo. How amazing would that be? At the end of the day, done is better than perfect. If the picture are good enough, you know, like they can clearly see what it is that they're buying. If you know, your listing title is good enough, it's got a good number of keywords, even if you don't know the actual style name, if it's priced well, 
the item will sell. I have seen some crazy things sell in my time, things that, you know, have been thrown onto people's beds, things that have two words in the title, listings with the brand name misspelled. Things will sell because they're listed. <laughs> so go ahead and get your item listed and try to work as quickly as possible, not letting that desire to be perfect get in your way. Those are my five tips, guys. I hope that you're able to take some of those to heart and I hope by doing so, it's able to completely transform your reselling business. And like I said, put a thousand additional dollars into your pocket every month. You know, reselling really has been such a game changer for me and my family. And it's only been because I've been practicing the very five tips that I've shared with you. And as I continue to practice those things over and over again, I get better at them. And as I get better and faster at things, I'm able to do more, list more, sell more, and make more money. Again, if you want to learn five more tips on how you can make at least a thousand dollars every month reselling, go over to my friend Rose's channel. She's got some great tips for you over there. By the way, if you are here from Rose's channel, thank you so much for checking me out and welcome. But by the time you finish watching both of our videos and implementing all 10 of these tips, I really do think that you're going to be on track to start making a thousand dollars a month from reselling. That is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button on your way out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider doing so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.